Hello everyone, hope your studies are going well. Um, I've had requests to give a few advice regarding the ORE part 1 preparation. So I thought I would just make a video regarding it and help you guys out. So I'm here today to talk to you about all about part 1 ORE examination. So part one of warrior examination is conducted in two days and is basically uh, a multiple choice questionnaire based examination. Um, so on day one, they would test your basic sciences knowledge and day two would be your clinical registry. All right. Um, so regarding the examination, you can always look up their website uh, where they have given you clear instructions on what the syllabus would be and what you're expected to study. Well, apart from that, uh, let me tell you all how to go about this part one examination. So if I were to be giving you a time frame as to how long this would take uh, to prepare for part one. So what I did was um, I took roughly about three months uh, to prepare for part one. So I was doing I was not working and I was at home most of the times. So I could uh, more or less devote at least four to five hours of studies um, for the part one examination. So let me give you a list of the books that you need to study. Um, so the most important, one of the most important books is your pink book, uh, as it is very widely known, also called as the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Dentistry. So this book, you have to study in and out. So sometimes um, for me, what I, for me, the difficulty what I um, faced was um, since I had finished my BDS a couple of years ago, it was a bit difficult to get back to this book because um, this book just gives, it's very brief. Um, so unless you have a bit knowledge of your clinical dentistry, like, like pretty okay, only then you'll be able to understand this book. So I would say that the first time you read it, you may not be able to understand everything. But don't worry, read it a couple of times and I'm sure you will get through it. And in case you have any doubts regarding anything, you can always look up the internet and you can read up more about it. All right. So that's very important. This pink book is one of the most important books for you to study. Um, then comes your blue book. That is the Oxford Handbook of Applied Sciences. Now, this book is not all that important as your pink book. Um, so what I did was I studied this book towards the end um, and it's a bit difficult to read this book, especially because the letters are really tiny and it doesn't interest you. It doesn't have any colored pictures. Um, so before you read this book, I would say you should go about reading other few books like you have for physiology. There's a book called Wander's. This is a very good book because it has a lot of beautiful pictures, illustrations, and it you know, it's, it makes you, it's, it gives you joy when you read physiology, especially randers. So some of the important chapters in this um, book that you need to cover is basically your muscles, endocrine system, your CVS, respiratory system, and immune system. So if you've covered these important chapters in physiology, then if you read these chapters and you get back to the blue book, I'm sure you'll understand better. Okay. Uh, now going to anatomy, uh, you can always read your Chaurasia, which you may have studied during your undergrad days. And uh, also there's another book called Netters. Um, now Netters is good in for the fact that it has got of it's got a lot of pictures. Um, so for ORE part one, what I was asked in anatomy was um, was basically they had given a lot of pictures. And they would ask you to identify some of the nerves, veins, arteries, and the head, head and neck region. That was most mostly what I got for anatomy. So make sure that you do these pictures, uh, diagrams really well. Um, and prepare yourself for anatomy. All right. Then go back always to your blue book and study whatever is given in that. All right. So these are the basic books that you need to do. And... Um, Apart from that, also there are books like Master Dentistry, which I wouldn't really recommend you to study because it's, it's a lot of material given in that. It's not really important. Um, and also there's another book called um, The Causin, that is MCQs in Dentistry. So this book is, is very good for the fact that it has a lot of MCQ questions. 
Um, so you get to solve the questions and in between you can always go back and read up whatever you're not able to answer. Uh, so it, it helps you to prepare yourself for the exam. So that's Carson, uh, NCQs in Dentistry. Then there's another book uh, from the past test series. These are your best of fives and your EMQs. All right, these two books are important from your uh, past test. Also, there's a website um, from past test which helps you to practice um, MCQs. So you can always join your website. Um, I would say it's more or less the same thing that is given that has been given in the books because um, I've read the books and I've, I had also joined the website as well. But uh, the website didn't really give me uh, any extra information, I would say. But it's always good to do as many MCQs as possible. All right. And then um, you have another book called Your Thousand Questions in Clinical Dentistry. I think this book is mostly read for your Australian exams. But definitely since they are MCQs, it also it helps you. And in addition to this, there are a few things like your Scottish guidelines, racist guidelines, and your BDA advice sheets. So in BDA advice sheets, some of the important um, sheets that I read was your radiation in dentistry, ethics in dentistry, infection control, healthcare waste and management, health and safety, disciplinary procedures and dismissal, and employee maternity and paternity rights. These are some of the important papers that you need to read. Um, yes, and these, I think, um, these are the set of books that you need to study for your part one. Um, and there's, very, there's something very important, I must tell you, that um, if you join your Facebook groups like ORE Part 1 group, um, there, would be, there would be a lot of feedback questions which would be posted by somebody or the other. So the trick to passing this exam is what I understood is going through these feedback questions because they are repeated quite a few times. And if you master these questions, I'm sure you can pass it. Um, I think, yeah, that's about it. These are the main things that you need for your ORE part one preparation and be consistent work hard i'm sure you'll all reach your goal and go for the next set that is part two all the best guys see you later bye also if you have any questions don't hesitate to write in the comment section or post me a question i can always answer you all right see you then